All right, hello everyone. So I normally don't make what encoding overloaded. What? <laughs> what the? I normally don't make uh, videos of my commissions because I don't know. I'm just too lazy. <laughs> but I'm actually pretty proud of this one, and yeah, I wanted to show how I made it. So yeah, I'm gonna talk out of my ass here. So I'm sorry if I can't really explain it well or you know explain myself well but yeah so this song is you suck at love by simple plan and it was commissioned to me i was commissioned to make an instrumental by my friend josh lintag can check him out somewhere here yeah i'll put the links in the description and yeah he asked me to make you know just a almost exact copy of the song just an instrumental because maybe he couldn't find one or something but yeah anyway what i did for this one is i started copying the drums first and i you know i listened to the track but I also had a video here, if it's gonna play. I also had a video here. Shoutouts to Tom Mitchell Drum for making this video. And basically, I programmed my drums based on this dude's playing. So I watched it uh, slowly. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I just really watched what drum he hits. And then I proceeded to, you know, proceeded, is that a word? <laughs> proceeded to, you know, program it myself just by hearing it. So the first thing is I used empty power drum kit. This is actually a free VST. And in my opinion, it sounds pretty good. So yeah, that's what I used for this whole song. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> so what I did is... I just programmed it in the piano roll in FL Studio. So this is what it looks like. There's a lot of patterns here. I, I made like, I don't know, 21 I think. Yeah, 21. It says right here, 21. So this is how I copy the drums. So yeah. What I did is I just wrote the drums here. And the thing you want to do with drums is you want to adjust the velocity here, which is, you know, how loud a drum is hit, if I'm correct. Because, you know, in real life, humans don't really hit a drum in the same velocity or the same, you know, it doesn't sound the same for the whole song. You have to vary it so it sounds a little bit more realistic. So I vary the velocity over here and this is what it sounds like. This is actually, what is this? This is actually just the symbols. Let's go to the snare. One second. Yeah, FL Studio is very, very messy when it comes to the UI. But if you can get used to it, pretty good. So the most important thing you have to do is focus on the snare because it's the drum that you can hear the most, I guess. Yeah, you have to focus on the velocity here. So... Yeah, it has to sound like varied, you know? <laughs> I can't really explain myself here. Because if it sounds the same, like if I put all of this... Well, what? If I put all of this in the same, it's gonna sound like this. And then if you, you know, make fast moves like this... Yeah, it sounds very... <laughs> I mean... The VST actually kind of helps with the velocity thing, but it still sounds too artificial. So yeah, that's what I do. I just vary it. Yeah, that's basically how I did the drums. I just copied it. I'm actually pretty proud of the toms here. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like the sound of the toms in this kit, but I had to work with what I had, so yeah. If only I had like Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer, this would sound way more professional, but I don't have any money for that. So yeah, 
I just used free VSTs and really, they say, you know, it's not necessarily the gear, it's how you use it. And I believe that to a point, but yeah, you need a bit of good gear, I guess, <laughs> to help make your songs sound way better, you know, way more pro. So yeah. So yeah. I can't really say much else about programming, I just really listened to the song and copied it. But maybe if I, I... I don't really know how to... I mean, I know a little bit on how to read notes, but I don't really use it. <laughs> I, just, I just base it on my ear, but it will surely help if you know some theory. But yeah, so far I did pretty good, I guess. Especially this part. I'm pretty proud of that part. <laughs> and then, let's go on to the mixing. So I had like, yeah, I put them on four tracks. Because I know it's not the right thing to do. I, I see some people like making a single bus for the drums, but I, I still have yet to learn that. So... <laughs> Yeah, this is what I'm doing. So basically for the drums, for example, the cymbals, I just do a couple of EQ, I do some compressing, and I use Vintage. I like using Vintage. It's a good preset. Then Maximus, I, I kind of DS it. <laughs> I mean, it's as long as it sounds good, right? <laughs> Next is... I put some reverb, so this is what the symbol sounds like. It's important that you put compressor so it can be heard in the mix. So it's louder in the mix without peaking. And the thing that helps the peaking here is the limiter in the master bus, so don't turn that off. So yeah. Okay, next we have the tom. Yeah, for the tom I added a bunch of bass. And a bit of mids because I wanted it to sound like fuller and bigger, you know, so I put a lot of bass on the toms. I mean, I could put more, but yeah, I've already finished this project. I can't really change it. I mean, it's it does sound good. The, re the reverb helps a lot. And then same thing here. Compressor, vintage preset, multiband compressor. This is where I... I usually use comp 4.7 for my stuff and I adjust the low, mid, and highs in these knobs. Just the gains and that's basically all I use. I know I need to learn a lot more about this compressor but it works for me. Next is we have the snare. This is where I usually have a hard time. So what I did for this one, because usually I EQ the snare but uh, I tried doing that before and it ended up, it doesn't really pop out of the mix, so I didn't do an EQ this time. I just compressed it and did some, did a little bit of stereo enhancer here. I didn't, I put the volume down because I didn't want it to be full stereo, you know? And then I added reverb. Uh, the reverb I use for these drums is usually... Just the default one or the venue, because I like I like those. I like the sound of those reverbs. And then I just mess with a wet knob here. And yeah, that's basically how I mix the drums. And lastly is the kick. For the kick, I added a little bit of bass. I think it was enough. And then a bit of treble too. Just to make it pop out and a compressor i didn't add reverb because i think it would sound overbearing uh so yeah i didn't put reverb and that's basically the drums next i recorded the guitars here which i actually don't record my guitars or instruments in uh fl because i feel like it's way too tedious in fl <laughs> and also i'm not used to it I'm used to using Ableton Live Lite here, so yeah, I, w I want Ableton Live, you know, the full thing, but <laughs> I don't, it's way too expensive. So yeah, I'm working with Ableton Live Lite. I got this from my audio interface for free, so yeah, that's what I use. 
I have a total of six guitars in this track. So actually seven if you count the little lead over here. And this is what each of them sound like. I have six tracks here. If you record guitar, you'll know this already, but I have... Usually I only use two tracks or four tracks because to make a guitar sound fuller, you have to record like two times or four times and then pan each. So for guitar two, I pan this 25% to the left, 25% to the right, and then for guitar three, I panned it all... I panned it all like fully to the left and then I panned it all to the right and basically it sounds fuller because if you have only these I guess I can't really change the panning now but so if you have only one guitar track uh, imagine this is panned to the center right I mean, it sounds fine, right? But it's not full. If you recorded four tracks, this is actually like the minimum amount of tracks. Some people record like 32. I've seen people record like 32 tracks. That's too much for me, man. So yeah, this is what it sounds like. Yeah, it just sounds much more full, you know, fuller. So yeah. And then I added a different variation of the guitar. This is the, you know, root note, if I'm correct. Because <laughs> I, I played power chords here. So yeah, what I did here is I just played chords. And if you combine them all... Actually, I played like, uh, I don't know what it's called, but the slide octaves, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what that thing is called. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, for this one, I just played chords. And then, yeah, some slight leads. Like, like this, what, what do you call this? I know it's something that has to deal with octaves, but... Oh so yeah, so combine it with the main guitars. Oops, start up here. So yeah, also the effects I use for this is Archetype Pliny, which, yeah, I used my birthday money to get that <laughs> like two years ago, and it's proving very useful. <laughs> Next is how I mix them. It's, uh, it's almost the same as the drums here. I just put EQs for, for the guitars. It should be a bit sharper, so yeah. Oh wait, this is actually, okay, there. For the guitars, it's a bit sharper, a bit of bass, mids, and then compression. This is the same. I use vintage preset. And then multiband compressor. I just adjust the gains. And then Maximus, because I'm actually not sure of this. 
I already said it earlier, but yeah, I I try to DS them so <laughs> the harsh frequencies aren't you know bleeding out. <laughs> I don't, I actually don't know if it works, but sounds like it works to me. <laughs> and then reverb. This is a I think I just use default here and just put the wet knob down. And then yeah, so this is the guitar two track to the left, guitar two track to the right. Guitar 3, track to the left, then right, and then I put the volumes of Guitar 3 lower, just so it's not too overbearing, you know? And then, oh, for, for Guitar 3, I made it a bit, if I'm correct, wait, no, it's just the same, okay, good. <laughs> and then, yeah, for Guitar 4, it's a little bit different, I think, yeah, there's more mids, there's more uh, highs here, and then I think, yeah, reverb. Oh yeah, I put stereo effect too. Uh, I like using stereo enhancer instead of stereo shaper because I feel like it's it just sounds way better. The stereo effect of this one sounds way better. I can't really, I don't really have studio monitors like speakers, so I can't. It sounds good on my headphones, so, but f with my, you know, not studio monitor speakers i can't really tell <laughs> but yeah that's uh guitar four here and that's basically oh yeah for the lead i just changed an effect here i just used the lead effect in archetype pliny i actually have the original oops let's not stretch that i actually have the original one it just sounds way too raw and also it's panned to the left. If I combine that, what happens? Nah, I, li I just like the normal one. The lead one. Yeah, it's just a lead effect with delay and reverb. Maybe some compression. But, like I said, it's mostly just presets in Arctite Pliny. I don't really mind it. I just turn it on and yeah, sounds good. <laughs> so yeah, this this whole thing it is, isn't a one take. This is very section. I can show you right now. Let's go to Ableton. This is not a one take. <laughs> very far from that actually. Uh, so I record my stuff like I said in Ableton and yeah, this is what it looks like here. There's uh, in Ableton Live Light you can only have eight tracks, so that's what limited me. So yeah, this is how I recorded it. It's very sectioned and um, honestly, I can just admit like some parts here are copy pasted for it to be easier, you know, so I don't have to re-record every time. And this is what Archetype Pliny looks like. I used the Selenium Forest uh, preset here and then for the lead I used big lead selenium forest so yeah that's what i used okay that's basically all i do in ableton i don't really mix there because i'm still learning but yeah my main daw is fl studio next let's go to the base this one for the base let's go to the pattern for the base i use i actually use two instruments uh, Boo Bass, which is free on uh, FL, and then Sub Bass, which is from Citrus. Uh, where's it? Yeah, Sub Bass 2. Because I like the sound of both combined. I use it with any track I make recently. I've been using it recently, so that's what it sounds like. Yeah. So let's hear it raw first. Yeah. yeah, the sub bass just brings it out more because the boo bass, if it's just solo, it sounds raw. So I add sub bass and then for the mixing, I add EQ again. It's all the same stuff. Yeah, I dip down the mids a bit and yeah, I put the treble up because why not? <laughs> And then what I do for this, because this is a rock song, 
Uh, and usually when they record bass for rock or metal, it's uh, the bass is usually distorted. There's some distortion effects. So yeah, I just put distortion here. It's not uh, this thing is not a real bass, so it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like an actual bass there. <laughs> but you know, it's in the background. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I just add a bit of distortion here. And it actually helps. And then stereo effect a little. It actually, you can't actually tell. Yeah, there's not much, but yeah. And then when you, when you combine it with the guitars, it sounds pretty, sounds pretty good. See? It sounds like, it sounds like an actual bass. And now it's, it sounds complete now. Because like... Without the bass, it just sounds not complete, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah, this guitar one here is a clean guitar. It's also archetype Pliny. Uh, I forgot which effect I used. Uh, I could show you later. Just a picture. I could show you a picture here of what I what preset I use in Pliny, and then here. It sounds like that. I just put a uh, compression again, EQ again, and it sounds good. Oh yeah, for the limiter, I only use it for noise gate. So yeah, I just use it as a noise gate. Because without it, I think it sounds pretty noisy. Oh, it's gone now for some reason. It went bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the quiet part. Also, when you're when you're recording, uh, I didn't do this, but make sure your strings are new and then make sure it's tuned all the time. <laughs> a little tip I learned. So yeah, that's a clean part. Next is... Because in the song, there's way more effects. So I tried to copy that. So for the clean parts, I I tried to copy like... In the, in the actual song, there's like a shimmer effect. But... Uh, I, d I don't know how to do that. So what I did is I just I just reversed the clean guitar and then I added some effects here. Effector, I use effector. And then I added lo-fi so it sounds like it's shimmering. <laughs> yeah. And then this is what it sounds like. So yeah. It actually just complements the guitar and it sounds full. I keep saying that. It sounds full. And then I added some fade ins, fade out, so it doesn't just, you know, pop out, you know. Yeah, same goes for here. I just reversed, put some effects, and yeah. And then put the volume lower. Oh yeah. This faded out here. Okay. Actually I did <laughs> whoops, that's wrong, but yeah. And lastly, I just put some risers here because I heard some risers in the original song. So I just, you know, you just search for risers here in the browser. There's some free risers here you can use. And I just stretched it to, you know, sound, to make it sound in time, I guess. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Same here. It's just the same. <laughs> I just copy pasted. <laughs> I could probably use more, but I got lazy now. Okay. Oh, I used a different one here. Noise punch. 
and then the same. So yeah, if you combine them all, it sounds like it's rising, you know? <laughs> So yeah, the last thing I do to finish the mix is because I, I appreciate the limiter here, but when you combine all of these instruments, it just sounds way too compressed. So what I do is I open up Adobe Edition here, and that's where I do volume balancing. So this is what I did. I just, you know, I just render out each track individually and put it on and put it in Audition and i just basically adjust some volumes and i call it done so yeah this is what it sounds like in audition right it just sounds way more balanced to me at least maybe the bass is a little bit too loud but i think we're done that's the final thing this is the final instrumental Oh yeah, I won't play it fully. You can check out Josh's uh, song when he releases it. But yeah, that's basically how I mix this. I had a lot of fun mixing this, so thanks Josh for commissioning me to make it. And yeah, I will. I, I wanna make more rock-ish songs <laughs> in the future. But with that said, I think that'll be it for this video. Like I said, I don't really make these sort of videos usually because I'm too lazy but this one's kind of special I guess <laughs> so yeah all right see you guys later bye bye